glide baits, rattle spoons, slender spoons, jigging spoons, frostbite spoons, jig head, mini spoons, Len Thompson spoons are all amazing for wintertime ice fishing. I'm gonna show you guys why. All right, so you guys, come a little closer. I'm gonna show you some close-ups, some actual footage of underwater shots with all these hooks and show you how awesome they are. So these are glide baits. I absolutely love them. Why they're so popular is that you can use them in hard water and open water. You can cast them, you can snap jig them, even if you get bored, you can just reel them in like a crane. They're very, very popular. And the most popular is just vertical jigging off your boat. And obviously, when you're ice fishing, you're vertical jigging, so you can use them for that too. Now, they will catch you any type of species of fish. They've caught lots of walleyes for us. They've caught pike, perch. Now, for perch, you want to get maybe a little bit smaller. You can get sizes anywhere from 5 grams to 24 grams. These, the ones I got, they're all 12 grams. The reason I like 12 is because they will get down deep and hard and fast because when you're ice fishing, every second counts when there's a school of fish down there. Now, also, you can cast them very far too, so you can get some pretty good distance on them in open water as well. Now, as far as tipping them, you can tip them however you want. I like to stick to the minnow. Reason being, obviously, it, likes, it looks like a minnow, so I'd rather keep the scent kind of the same style and all that. You can still put worms on them, mealworms, leeches, whatever you want to use. Even if you're using perch on the smaller like five gram ones, tipping them with like a mealworm or maggots, something like that will work pretty good too because it's a little smaller. It won't look, look so bulky. And I like to tip them usually on the bottom treble is what I do. But I have been known to do all three too when you get really, really desperate to try to get some fish. So this is the fin on the back. So essentially when you're ripping them, it's going to shoot it up to the side and shoot it off and it's going to kind of stagger around. It's going to float around, rip it up. It's going to go off to the side. So when I get down there, the first thing I want to do is just jig it and wrap it really really hard or rip it really hard so then it'll attract the fish they may see it it may bring them over you can even pound them in the dirt that makes a difference too it may start like a, uh, a fishing for a feeding frenzy or anything like that but once i see them coming in on the camera what i like to do is just slow down a little bit because if you're just ripping them like crazy the fish may miss the strike and may just swim off so if you slow down a little bit you can jig it a little bit just just tease them a little bit when they're all uh, tipped up with your bait and everything and usually you have really good luck on glide baits super popular hooks you can use them anytime anywhere spoons big and small there's a whole bunch of sizes they're all good i promise you they're all unique in their own way Starting on the outside, you can use regular Lynn Thompson spoons. I like to stick to the smaller ones. They still catch fish. I like trying to get trout with them. We've caught a lot with the number sixes, the number sevens, the five of diamonds. Moving on to these micro spoons, they're a little smaller, 3.5 grams, and they got a nasty little lip on them. So when you're jigging these, they're more sporadic. They got a lot more vibrating motion on them. So it depends how aggressive the fish is, what it might, what may entice the bite. It depends on the spoon, everything. But they got a lot of action, and the quicker you rip them, the more they're gonna shake. You have slender spoons. Now these got a complete arc in the side and they also have rattles. So when you're ripping these ones, they're gonna be going up to the side, they're shooting off to the side, they're gonna be rattling, they're gonna be making a lot of noise. This one's bright, it may attract them. And it's always nice to have an eye and a hook. I don't know what it is, fish seem to love that. Moving on now to jigging rattle spoons. Very popular, people catch a lot of wally on these. Now, when you first drill your hole, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna rip them down there and you wanna maybe try and attract the fish. If it's dirty, maybe they can hear it, they can call it in. Now, benefit the running these is, and a benefit to ice fishing is you have two rods. So what you wanna do is you wanna have one other hook right beside it and try and have something uh, different presentation in general because if you bring them in they may not like those and they may choose the other hook right beside it so you can kind of bounce around feel the fish out for the day and you have two different hooks going at least you can call them in you can see what they're going to bite moving to the macho minnow this is the bleed tab on this one it's very unique it's different from all the other ones it may look like blood a like gill like a wounded fish anything like that so it's just a basic uh, ripping on this one that's all you have to do it's got a nice eye in it it kind of looks like a cast master at the bottom the way that spoon goes out at the bottom now no introduction it is the frostbite spoon it's got a nice motion too, nice bend in it, and that flappy little thing right here, man, the fish just love it. You can catch anything on this pike, walleye, perch, it doesn't matter. Fish love this. This is an awesome hook all around. There's a whole bunch of different sizes you can get. You can get the mini ones, or they even have a bigger version now of these in a whole bunch of different colors. Bucktailed, trebled haired hooks have always worked great. Sometimes you need a little something else down there. It looks like a little floating bug. There's something about it that'll entice a bite from the floating hair in the water. And it's always a good idea. You guys can tip these with whatever you want. Minnows, worms. I prefer minnows. Sometimes you use a big old greasy night collar, but depends how hungry the fish are. If they're not that hungry, pick a smaller hook put a little bit less of a bait, but it's just trial and error. It's not that hard if I can catch fish, so can you guys. Moving on to the last, and we got actually a bonus feature at the end, you guys, so stick around to the very end. Now, tungsten, super popular. Every ice fisherman will have these in their box. Reason being, 
Tungsten's heavier, it's more dense, so it's gonna get down a lot quicker. Now the main sizes I have and I like to use are four millimeter, five millimeter, and eight millimeter. Usually the pike, the walleye, they're better on eight millimeter. If you wanna downsize, you're doing panfish or trout, the four and the five work absolutely great. Now depending how the bite is, even walleye will catch a lot on five millimeters as well. And tipping these, I like to use worms. And they leave a nice big long tail. So it's really gonna, really gonna have a lot more action. It's gonna be moving in the water a lot more, opposed to just using like a half dead head of a minnow or anything. And at least the worm will be moving a lot. As far as jigging these, I don't think you ever wanna jig these very aggressively. I never have, and I don't really know anybody who does, but I absolutely could be wrong. I just usually, usually leave them on a dead stick, a jacker of some sort. And it usually, if you're gonna be jigging them, you just give them a little bit of motion to try to entice the bite. Now, this is the little bonus feature. It kind of goes back to the tungsten hooks. Trout are super hard to catch. Now on top of, you guys should be running 100% fluorocarbon with about a 12 to 18 inch leader. Now if you can't get in the bite, if you watch some of these videos, they're bumping it, they're floating around, they're just mouthing it, they put it in, they shoot it out. Like they're so hard to catch sometimes. So what you wanna do, now you can't really tell with the camera, Go try and find a number 12, 14, or even a 16 treble. They're super small. Now what you wanna do is tie it on the end and whatever you're using, something maybe small, like either mealworms we've used in the past, if you can get those maggots. Even if you get like minnows or shrimp, you crush it up, you can ball it and put it right around the entire, like around the entire treble. You don't wanna have no barbs, no metal, nothing showing. And sometimes that'll work and it's super light too. It's lighter than any hook tungsten you're gonna be using. And now since your entire hook is covered with bait, they won't see it, they won't feel it, it'll be way less resistance. Like I was saying earlier, it's lighter that may get them to hook up. But they are super hard to catch, especially in winter time because they have more time to investigate the hook, they look at it. It's not like open water when they're, it's like a reaction bite. So that's why they're a lot harder to catch during ice.